Hey y'all, welcome to the second episode of Abstract Reviews. Once again, I'm Twincher and I'm here to rate what I consider the best rock and metal of last week. Everything on this list is an album and as such will be rated out of 10. Let's get down to it. First up from Tokyo, Japan, we have Anthem with their release Nucleus. This is a fun album. You can tell they're old school rockers who love thrash because it seems like a hybrid of both old school rock with thrash with those emphasized eighth notes breakneck solos and just old school sounding music that seems like it was written to have a good time too there's a lot to like on this album there's a lot of little surprises that you hear and you're like oh yeah this is good good thinking outside the box for their originality i give this a seven out of ten next from grand prairie alberta canada we have arrival of autumn with their newest release harbinger this album was very refreshing this band is metalcore and nowadays with metalcore it's very easy for bands to just kind of put out a computer generated random 16 note breakdown and call it a song these songs were very well constructed and it wasn't just trendy or cool or whatever these guys play their instruments well because you had solos over those breakdowns there's a lack of solos in metalcore nowadays their band profile says that they are planning to make it in the metal industry in their own terms if they keep playing like that i think they're accomplishing their mission statement very good album of which i give a seven and a half out of ten and now from love in belgium we have brutus with their album nest this album was pretty cool to me. It had a different sound quality as soon as I started. Kind of like a DIY feel, which I always kind of appreciate. They're listed as rock, but they give me more of a punk vibe, more of a post-hardcore vibe. Their band pictures only show three people, but they sound much bigger than that. So whether that's done for the album or is done live, that's always good when you hear songs and you think, wow, there's only one guy on guitar. Oh, there's only three people in the band. It kind of sounds to me like these songs aren't weren't really created to fit in a genre or anything. That it's just three people playing and making a band and making some songs, which is something I really enjoy when I hear a band. And apparently Lars Ulrich is into them, so, you know, he's never wrong. Anyway, I give this album a 7.5 out of 10. We got another one from Canada, from New Westminster, British Columbia, Canada is prog metaler Devin Townsend with the album that would not be the same without the sage advice of Chad Kroger, Empath. This album is definitely very, very proggy in terms of style, in terms of arrangement, in terms of genres. It's like a constantly changing amorphous album in terms of sound and everything. What can I say? This is Devin Townsend. We know what he's like very eclectic, erratic, very constructed in the way that he does things with a very precise method to his madness. And every time I hear something new from him, I think, why am I still surprised? Which is, I think, a good thing to hold on to as an artist, to be able to capture your own sound and still sound new and fresh. And like I said, it's Devin Townsend. He does what he does and nothing else. And we love him for it. Empath? gets a 7 out of 10 for me. Next from Copenhagen we have Hard Rock Troop Forever Still with their album Breathe in Colors. I can see anyone who's a fan of like Three Days Grace or Breaking Benjamin being a fan of this. To me though it, even though it was a good album there wasn't a lot of variation. It kept my interest until the end but other than that it was a good experience listening gonna give it a six and a half out of ten from gothenburg sweden we got melodic death metal band night rage and this is the type of album i've been craving for for a little bit melodic is a good word to describe them in the musical guitar play and the vocalistic stylings the screaming stylings all very hard and very melodic and even though they're very hard they're very heavy uh, they didn't just play with that chuggy chuggy natural sound you get from any type of metal. This music was very well structured, great leads, and aggressive emotional vocalizing. I've been called an idiot before on Reddit because of this opinion, but sometimes I feel like melodic death metal sounds like grind-inspired 
screamo, which is my favorite type of music. And I made that parallel on this and it made it all the more enjoyable for me. This is easily hands down going to be my favorite album of the week and thus this gets an 8.5 out of 10 from me. Representing Ausfold Norway, we have Nordjevil with their release, Necrogenesis. And that was hard to say. Um, black metal. Black metal, black metal, all day black metal. They do things a little bit different. They don't just, you know, outright attempt to be an anti-religion black metal band, which they are. But they also talk about things like self-destruction and things like that. It is what it is for me. Lyrics don't make someone defining or different or anything. Just overall, this was an enjoyable album in terms of music. I give it a 6 out of 10. From all parts of the world, next we have Ultimus with their release, Something Wicked Marches In. Ultimus is considered a black and death metal band, but this record sounded a bit more than that to me. It sounded like black and thrash to me. Sometimes it got a little sludgy, but they were a bit black and death metal. No, no doubts about that. The whole time through, I was just fascinated with the mix of all those genres and it stayed consistent all the way through. I'm going to give this for their originality seven and a half out of ten. And last up from Knoxville, Tennessee, we have Whitechapel with their seventh album release, The Valley. I know this album was really anticipated this year. I haven't really listened to Whitechapel since their second album, since This Is Exile. I'm really glad to see that they've really expanded from that. They've come a long way in their sound and it shows and I really hope it pays off dividends because this album, The Valley, is actually really good. Just listening to it, I can see the band really expanded their musical knowledge and have a working knowledge on how to perform or incorporate things into songwriting or performing. Um, so they have definitely become a better band than the good band they were before. So kudos to them. Another part of my favorite things of this album is right there on the cover based on true events. Kind of makes it seem cinematic going into it before you even listen to it. And um, now I'm going to do my research and find out what those true events are. Anyway, overall, this is a very strong album. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. And that's it. That'll do it for this episode. My favorites this week were definitely Night Rage and the new White Chapel. So what y'all think? You agree? You disagree? Leave some likes, leave some comments, let me know what you think. Remember, I am just one degenerate ingrate. Feel free to disagree. Uh, take a look at the list down below to see everything that I listened to this week. And like last week, here is my shameless plug. If you wouldn't mind, take a look at the music I create. The band is Animism Abstract. The album is December. Take a listen. You will like it, or at least I hope you do. Links to everything down below. I'll see you on the next episode, and keep that life good.